RCA Victor Records was formed by a merger of the U.S.-based Radio Corporation of America and the Victor Talking Machine Company of Camden, New Jersey. Pioneering inventor Emil Berliner was a central figure in many record company startups around the world. Emil Berliner started the Berliner Gramophone Company, which in England became EMI, in Germany became Deutsche Gramophone, and in the United States became RCA Victor. In Canada, RCA's pressing plant was located in Smith Falls, Ontario. Lois Mantle was an RCA plant employee for 18 years. She recalls that summers were especially tough for the workers. In the summertime, in Smith Falls, it can get extremely hot and humid. And inside the plant, these were steam presses. It got very, very hot. So it would be nothing to have it high 90s, 100. There were times when the girls would start to faint. And then they would, you know, say, we better shut them down for an hour or so and let, let them get out and get a little bit of fresh air. During the 1950s and early 60s, RCA Victor's biggest sellers were performers such as Perry Como, Sam Cooke, Jim Reeves, and the hit-making machine of Elvis Presley. I knew when Elvis had a hit because the plant just went into high gear. They just went 24-7, brought everybody in they could, and they literally couldn't crank them out fast enough. He had so many hits over that period of time that it, it was good for the town. It was good, certainly good for the people that worked at the plant, and uh, it was good for Elvis, too. RCA's Smith Falls pressing plant received material from the U.S. head office, as well as from RCA's Toronto recording facilities. I used to work at the studios on Mutual Street, which is where we had the disc cutting equipment. But the plant, of course, was in Smith Falls, Ontario. So what we would do, we would take a lacquer that we had cut and we would have a cardboard ring and we would take another lacquer that we had cut and put it face to face so that the faces couldn't touch. And we'd build up a box of these things and then at the end of the day, I would usually take one of those boxes down to the CN Express office and put that on the train to go to Smith Falls overnight. So by morning, the guys in the plant would have the lacquer output from the previous day and start pressing phonograph records of the material that we had actually cut at the studios the day previously.